Hi everyone, so it's been a while since the last made a new YouTube video. So today's video, December 21st, 2018, very close to Christmas. I just, I'm starting my two week vacation. Uh, so I will be making some really cool videos. So, not much snow, it's actually melting, which is uh, pretty odd for this time of year. But anyways, I'm gonna be focusing on uh, two videos uh, today. Uh, the first video is going to be showing my Megaphobema robustum, uh, which is one of my uh, juvenile Colombian giant red legs. Uh, she's actually molting as we speak, and I've gotten some load of new additions that you have not seen yet between uh, November and December. So I'm going to make a separate video on that, as well as a new enclosure design, uh, courtesy of TangledInWebs.com. So I'll be um, speaking on this more about in a later video. So anyways, the meat and potato of this video is going to show you um, and documenting the molt cycle of my Megavabima robustum, the Colombian giant red leg. So uh, this is over here. So far it's about a two and a half inch unsexed. Currently it's around 3.30 p.m. and we're going to document her molt cycle and like I always do we're going to pull up the molt and examine it to see if it's a male or a female. So fingers crossed for a female but uh, we'll see. Alright guys catch you up in a little bit. Okay so 5 30 p.m. and yes we have some progress. So my M. robustum is finally going through his or her molt cycle. As you can see she's pulsating uh, the legs. And if you look right under her pedipalp, uh, you are able to see her new chelicerae that are coming out. So this is so exciting to see a tarantula molt, especially to catch one on a film since I haven't been doing that in Oh, a good couple of months. So uh, definitely I'll be updating you within like 10 minutes to see how well uh, the progression is. And so far looking great. Alright guys, so 15 minutes in, 5.45 p.m. Documenting my robust molt. And you can tell that uh, she's really starting to come out. Carapace and Chalurserae are fully out starting to get the femurs and the patella so I would say she's about a quarter of the way done alright guys so it's about 607 and my robustum is about halfway done so the patellas are all out and you can see part of the leg segments you can see the gorgeous uh, red coloration I'm assuming my robustum is going to be at least th three inches. Again, with post molted tarantulas, you shouldn't disturb them for at least a week, and just make sure you got plenty of uh, hydration in there, which is pretty visible from the cage, the enclosure. So I'm going to wait a week before I actually feed this one, and he's actually going to get a new enclosure but very cool. Okay, so we'll check back in about 15-20 minutes and see how well uh, he's doing. Or she. Alright, there's my P. Metallica male. And my Metallica female. Here's one P. Metallica. It's my male. And here's my little female. Of course I have Mia still. So I think one of my YouTubers asked me if I had a pair of P. Metallica. And yes I do, male and female pair. All right, now 626. And my M. robustum is finally done. So it took about an hour for this process to happen. You can tell that this spider looks like a million bucks. Very nicely colored. 
You can see the fangs are translucent white, so that means that it's very, very fresh. Of course, you just molted, or he, and uh, when you have freshly molted tarantulas, you just shouldn't bother them for at least a week, so that way uh, you can let them harden up. Usually, I wait about a week uh, before I feed them and rehouse them. All right, so uh, when this guy or gal flips over, I'm gonna go and try to examine the skin and show you guys if it's male or female. Again, I have sneaking suspicion that this uh, particular robustum is female. I do have a confirmed male uh, which is um, one you've been watching my YouTube videos from. So at this point, um, he or she is just grooming him or herself, um, checking out the new threads and trying to feel it like, oh, this looks very good, very good. But uh, yeah, successful molt. So wait till uh, this one flips over and away from the molted skin and I'll pull it out and examine it. All right, now that I got the molt out, I'm going to open up this abdomen area and I'm gonna check for spermatheci. If I do see spermatheci, then I know that my tarantula is a confirmed female. If I don't, then I have a male. So, let's do it. Okay, so, let me turn on some light here. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to open up the abdomen area with uh, a pair of meat skewers and a chopstick. I don't know how well this will turn out, but I'm going to do it. Uh, since the molt is fresh, it will be easy uh, to do it. Uh. Alright guys, so recording this on my iPhone 8. As you can see, my Robustum has successfully molted. So, I have the molt here all opened up. So what I'm going to be doing is examining the inside of the abdomen and what I'm hoping to see from this uh, video is a spermatheci that's located in between the top pair of book lungs which is over here and the lower book lungs. So let's zoom in and see what we find. Unfortunately, uh, it's another male. <laughs> All right, and it kind of sucks because I have a other Megathelium robustum uh, that's actually a confirmed male. So uh, that kind of is a slap into the face. But anyways, I'll try to hunt for a female. So that's how you go about sexing the molt. Always check the admin area if you do see a flap that's right in the center of the admin then you have a 100 percent female in this case we don't see it and uh, this makes it a male tarantula okay so uh next video is uh pretty exciting um i got this enclosure from uh Ryan Mack, uh, who is the owner of TangledInWebs.com, and it's a really cool setup. Uh, as you can see, I rehoused my Pisotheria formosa, the same ornamental, which you're going to be seeing uh, me actually transferring with Isaiah. Uh, so uh, this female is in a enclosure that was designed by his friend Yan from the ground up, acrylic. 
And what's really unique about this enclosure, because a lot of people ask me about, do I actually use live plant setups? And I usually don't because with a very big collection, it's very hard to maintain um, a live setup. So this one is actually my very first attempt to use a bioactive setup. So we have live gold pothos plants. Uh, we have isopods and springtails around the enclosure. Uh, I mean, I'm ex super excited to see this and I want to thank you so much, uh, Ryan from tangledinwebs.com for providing me uh, this enclosure. So uh, you're going to see it in the next video and uh, that's about it. So enjoy some little pictures showing uh, my male Megafibula robustum. Don't forget to guys to rate, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click on the notification bell. All right, see you.